So this is the, the proper position that we are looking for, uh, always uh, as a start, uh, keep him comfortable, and then we decide about the exposure. Okay, we don't rec recommend uh, uh, like early exposure uh, at, uh, at our patients uh, for the cultural issue, as you know, on the brown here, especially if he's a female. So only expose what you need uh, as you go through. Uh, and as, as we start the exam, uh, we don't need a lot of exposure because actually we will just uh, start by general exam. So I'm not going to expose my patient at this moment. Uh, always you have to make sure uh, that your environment that you are using for the exam is, is, is very comfortable. You have good light, uh, the temperature of the room should be very suitable, especially if you are going to expose the patient uh, and keep him off clothes, because if the room is too cold, the patient will not like it. So good light, good uh, environment, and in addition always you have to keep privacy uh, if you are in a place uh, where you, ha you can use curtain or a room, a private room, then you have to close it. So the privacy, keeping privacy with the patient is very important because again, your patient will be more confident with you if, uh, if, if, he's, if he's in a private place. For sure, he would not like it if a lot of people are looking at him from here and there. Here and there. So privacy is very important to keep uh, at this moment. Now, once you prepare the patient well, uh, then you start the general appearance. The general appearance uh, of uh, respiratory system and the points that are there uh, are a lot. However, there are certain important issues that you have to make sure that you are covering. Uh, the first thing, uh, even before you touch the patient, general appearance is just the appearance of the patient without a lot of touch and even no touch. So the first thing that you will do is you will be looking at your patient uh, is he sick looking? Is he normal looking? Is he in pain? Uh, these are imp the first look that will start with the patient uh, is how he does appear. And then you look at the body belt of the patient, uh, the body belt symbol, body belt, you don't, to be, you don't have to be complicated, uh, whether your patient is obese or uh, uh, wasted, underweight, uh, this is our normal uh, body belt. Uh, and then you look at connections and respiratory distress, signs for respiratory distress. I will give you more about this as we go through. The first slide that we see here uh, now is uh, about sick or ill or normal, but just by looking at the patient. And this is common sense, just common sense looking at your patient, is he sick looking? Is he in normal, uh, like uh, usual way, or is he in pain? So this is the first thing. The second thing is, is uh, the body belt, which is either normal, obese, or patient is thin. You, you don't have to comment on the weight because we did not yet use weight measurements at this stage. And then we go next to uh, the connections, uh, whether your patient is connected to any medical kind of uh, connections that we will go through now together. The first thing you look for respiratory system is whether your patient is connected to oxygen. And if he's connected to oxygen, then you have to actually give more details about oxygen connections, whether he's connected to oxygen by nasal bronze, as you see it in the slide there. Uh, nasal bronze is there. And I can point to that as you see it there in the slide. And we have other uh, actually ways of uh, oxygen uh, therapy that we use commonly in the hospital, which is by mask, as you see also that in the slide. And this mask can be simple mask, can be mask with a reservoir, uh, can be Venturi mask. And all these are important to look at. And you should know such uh, oxygen therapy measures that we use so that you can comment. Uh, it is not enough to say the patient is on oxygen. It is important to say my patient is on oxygen through nasal bronchs, uh, and even important to mention the rate, two liters per minute, three liters per minute. And if he's connected to the mask, then you specify which type of mask that you are looking at. 
the other connections other than the oxygen, uh, important connection also we use in the hospital is the cardiac ECG monitor. And the uh, ECG monitor uh, is clear. You can see uh, uh, like a, a type of monitor that you see it in the slide there. Uh, and you can just look carefully for the monitor. You will see leads uh, that are connected to the patients to uh, record the uh, cardiac uh, ECG tracing. And uh, these leads will be connected to a monitor that will show up the ECG uh, pattern of the patient. Uh, important connections uh, are the IV connections. And there are different IV connections that we use in the hospital, uh, which again, it is very important to mention them, the name, the type. Uh, and as you go on through the course, uh, you will see these connections and you will be able to recognize them. I will go with them uh, now in the slides. The first one is the, uh, is the uh, slide that you, uh, you see there, which is the IV cannula, uh, which is just a simple cannula that will be uh, actually inserted in one of the peripheral veins usually. Uh, and the cannula can be connected to an IV sit or can be in place. Some patients will have just IV cannula without connections to, to uh, IV sit, and others they will have an IV sit, I, IV sit as you see it in the slide there, uh, the IV set will be hung up uh, beside the patient uh, and it will be uh, relaxed. It will be actually connected to the cannula and it can be simple IV set or can be uh, like uh, IV infusion bump, uh, can be uh, IV syringe bump uh, that uh, these are shown all in the slides. The first one is the infusion bump. This is the syringe bump, which you can also notice that is connected to the patient. Uh, this type is called syringe bump. There are other connections also uh, that you have to be careful uh, when you see your patient connected to, which is a central line. Some patients may not have the peripheral line connected. They may have a central line going to one of the major uh, central veins. Uh, there are different veins that we use in the hospital to connect our patients to. Uh, one of them is the uh, common one, is the subclavian uh, vein. There is the internal jugular vein, and we use also the femoral veins in some occasions. So uh, these, uh, 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 like, uh, IP connections which are central are important to point at and you should look carefully whether your patient has central line or peripheral line because the, actually the, the status of the patient uh, can be uh, important to look at depending on the line. So because usually if the patient is connected to a central line, usually these patients are more sick and they need more better care uh, so you have to keep more a careful eye on them. So the type of set of the line that you see connected to the patient can also give you uh, like an idea about uh, patient status. Uh, 